Hello, Cindy and Dawn and Carol and Justin and Valerie and Julie. Another Bobby. Hi, Bobby Adams. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Can't wait until I can see you all. We're starting in October 1st with Midwest Mania being live in Rosemont. Then we're going to Dallas the first weekend in November. I think it's the 4th through 6th. And then we're going to be in Boston December 11th through 13th or 10 through, I don't know. We're going to be in Boston. Like who wants to go to Boston in December? I'm sorry, Ann Gilbert, you live in Florida, but I do. I mean, it's like, I'm, yeah. And Trisha, you live there. Oh my God, how does she live there? I am so excited about this, but thank you guys for joining us tonight. We have a wonderful webinar. We have Sean Carlson, our event brochure creator and uh, presenter manager who is um, leading, is helping us manage this webinar. So thank you, Sean, for joining us. I have to thank you for coming, guys. We have over 160 people that are registered. We expect about 60 of you guys to show up and the rest, everybody else watches the recording, but you're here. You're here with us. So move your mouse, go to the bottom middle, middle of the page. You're gonna see that green share screen button. You can, um, and go to the left of it, if you would please. And you're gonna see the chat box. And I see that people have all, I want you to open your chat box because what I would like you to do is you're going to notice that where people are from, Allentown, Pennsylvania. Type in guys, Alabama, California, Boston, New Jersey, Rosemont, Texas, Mundelein, Illinois, Allentown, Pennsylvania, Cincinnati, Ohio. Keep them coming. I want you guys to know where that chat box is. Ask these ladies questions. They're not only beautiful, they're really smart, okay? They're very smart. We have Trisha Silverman with us who is one of my favorite people. She's amazing. She wrote this fantastic book, Healthy Dividends. What I love about her, she's, she's got an RD, but she also has an MBA. So she's really smart. So if I have questions, she's really smart. She's a registered dietitian, a fitness instructor, and a wellness coach. We've got Ann Gilbert, who is the owner of Two Shapes for Women um, in Florida. She oversees the operation of as many as 15 certified personal trainers 30 certified group fitness professionals. She has a booming aquatics program and she coordinates a fee-based group personal, personal training program. She also leads our active aging certification on several occasions, our aquatics cert as well. Amazing professional. We have been able to reconnect with Mary Beth Dubinsky. Thank goodness, one of my favorite people from AEA from a million years ago. We won't say how many years ago, right, Mary Beth? <laughs> but Mary Beth was a national trainer for silver sneakers for over 22 years, specializing not only in older adults, but in chronic diseases as well. And she's highly respected. She's got over 30 years experience. She's doing a lot of personal training right now with older adults. Really wonderful experience. And a, Oh my gosh, Christine Conti, I don't even know how long ago we met, six years ago, I think. <laughs> she had me on the weirdest podcast that I had so much fun and <laughs> I listened to it regularly. That's my watch talking to me, who was silenced. Anyway, Christine is amazing. It's called, it's called Two Fit Crazies. Mm -hmm. um, she's an international educa educator, a consultant, CEO of Conti Fitness. She's an expert in chronic diseases and shares a wonderful message with us all. First thing I'm going to do is like, what is a chronic disease? Christine, I'm going to start with you, please. So a chronic disease, what we're coming together to talk about today is defined broadly as any condition that lasts for more than a year. So that needs ongoing medical attention. And this could be anything, according to the CDC, like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, um, which are the leading causes of death in the United States. But it also could be something like depression. It can be an eating disorder. It can be alcoholism. And it is something that is highly affecting probably, almost, I would say, almost every single one of our participants in some way, shape, or form. And that's interesting because we think, you know, chronic disease, you, you know, you're used to think, oh, it's somebody who just can't move that well. 
And Anne, you're dealing with women all the time, every shape, every size, every age, and every different chronic disease. Yeah. And we welcome with open arms, open arms, people that are struggling with obesity and osteoarthritis and inability to move and have activities of daily life. Every day in Women's Only, we deal with the fact that one out of eight will have breast cancer in their lifetime. So every single time someone comes into our facility, it's not about wanting to help them look like an Instagram model, but instead about helping them with behavioral change from day one that will help them address activities of daily life for the rest of their lives. And, and I know you, Ann, um, are struggling yourself. Do you know, and there's, yeah, let me share that with you, everybody. I, you know, as a exercise professional for 38 years and the grandmother of all the gals that shapes fitness for women, I personally was diagnosed with breast cancer on March 1st. So there is so much fear that I felt, what did I do to cause this? What happened? There was blame and fear and what now? And what is the life after cancer look like versus the life before cancer? And these are the things that your members and your clients are dealing with on a daily basis. Just like the fear that we all felt with COVID, that was scary. And that lasted a year, Christine, right? That lasted a year. When someone is diagnosed with something that's altering their life, they're so confused and they're so emotional. And they have to give themselves first step permission to be emotional. Yes. And, and get emotional. <laughs> and finding those, yeah, she stopped talking. This is okay. <laughs> but you find your people that, that support you. And we create these programs and we work with these people and we connect with them. And sometimes we're we're their resource. And Christine, I'm gonna go back to you because you were talking about the struggle that you had with cancer. So I actually, for those of you that don't know, um, about 10, a little over 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with an advanced autoimmune disease and it left, it's the same disease that crippled my grandmother and caused her to be a quadriplegic for the last 20 years of her life and eventually caused her decline. And I was diagnosed with this same disease and it was, I had to grieve. It was a grieving process of my old self. As someone who I was a high level collegiate volleyball player and banker and teacher and coach and was always in the fitness industry, it defined who I was. I loved movement. And to think that I was not going to be able to move my body or clean myself or it just that's all that I thought of and that's something you know that Anne is just saying she recently went through and 10 years ago when I went through it it was a severe depression and you know mindset of the point where I thought I'm going to be a burden on my family and financially and just it, it's better if I'm not here and that was a real struggle and to be able to say, all right, well, I've been through chemo a couple times. I've, you know, I, I do a lot with fitness and nutrition and, you know, with all of us and how positive I've seen just this community of fitness professionals and nutritionists and getting all the information you can to change your life, which we're going to talk about tonight of what can we do to best support the people in your life that you may not know because when people look at me they think oh you don't know you don't know christine what i'm going through you look at you you're you're no uh, you know what i don't know exactly what you're going through but don't judge me because you can't judge a book by its cover because i wouldn't wish what i've gone through on anyone and and that's what i think is important to to remember when we start talking about this. And that, first of all, you ladies, you're very, you're my inspiration. And we're all totally impressed. And, and both Anne and I decided we weren't gonna cry. So we're not gonna cry. Um, <laughs> but Mary Beth, you, you deal with a lot of personal training clients now when you're aquatic uh, personal training. 
how do you manage a lot of the chronic diseases that you come across with people? You know, I listen. I listen a lot. And, um, you know, for me, moving into a role where exercise has been so important to me and empowering for me, I sit and I just listen and I, I try to meet them where they are and meet the client that way. But I know helping them manage their sy symptoms actually helps them improve their overall health. So whether, whether it's strength, whether it's endurance, whether it's a better mind, you know, whatever I can do to empower them, to give them more confidence and let them know it's okay. You know, and my, my, my rule and through my yoga training is you got to crawl before you walk, before you run. So wherever you are in your path of learning, if you've taken a step back because your health is not as good as it used to be, it's okay. You're never going to be where you were. You have to love the body you're in and let's go. Let's move forward. And that's what I do with a lot of my clients. So I love that. I love that you say meet them where they're at, love the body you're in. And sometimes we're their only connection, you know, because maybe they don't have a therapist. Maybe they don't, they, they're, they're strong for everybody else in their household and they have nobody else to, to talk with. And we create their group. Um, Trisha, also as a fitness professional, I get asked all the time, like, what should I eat? What should I eat? What do you eat, Sarah? And I'm, I'm of course, I'm never going to, you know, mention the chocolate brownie I had last night, <laughs> but which my husband brings home from work because he's trying to be nice to me. And yet he's horrible and ruining my sugar fix. But how do we encourage our clients to eat better? And what what effect does food have on our bodies and if we have a chronic disease? It has a huge effect. And I think that if we think more about what we can have and what we can do rather than what we can't have and what we can't do, it can really change your whole mindset. And nutrition is a lot about mindset. So if you're diagnosed with a chronic disease, you want to get informed and figure out what can you do and meeting with a dietitian and a fitness a personal trainer or fitness professional can, can really help people. And it's what Mary, what Mary Beth mentioned, I so strongly support listening to the clients more than we talk to find out what's going on, where are they at and where can we take them from where they're at? And everyone's at a different place in my book, I wrote about a nutrition staircase. And the way I look at nutrition is that everyone's on a different step of the staircase. If you're eating Wonder Bread and a lot of ice cream and chips, you're probably around that first step. And can we get you to the next step? Maybe we can get you doing whole wheat bread. I'm fine with any whole wheat bread in the beginning, but then when you're ready to take the next step, then maybe we get you to organic bread. And maybe you skip a couple of steps and go right to that organic whole wheat bread. But I, we're all at different steps and even nutritionists are. I can learn about different cultures and how they eat. I can try different recipes. I made a recipe, a different recipe recently with mangoes, for example. And like, I, I really never did much with mangoes. And now like I'm becoming a mango expert. Like there's always more we can do and, and learn for everyone. So where are you on that nutrition staircase and what, what step can you take? And baby steps can get you in that right direction. For most people, almost 90% of Americans are not getting enough vegetables, 90%. So that's something that we can help everyone with, whether we're a nutritionist or a coach or a fitness professional, are you eating your vegetables? And that's you know really key. And then can we get more specific with them to, to help them to do that? A lot of people don't like vegetables because of how they were prepared for them. Do you remember the square boxes of frozen spinach? I remember that from when I was a kid. Awful. I didn't like spinach. Now I love it because I realize you don't have to buy it frozen. If you get it fresh, it's great. If you buy baby spinach, it's prepared for you. So there's a lot we can do to help people to make it simple and to um, get them to eat more vegetables. That's one of the first things I focus on with people. And you actually did a great job of that, um, Trisha. I know I made the joke about the, the, the brownie, um, but um, like just last night, I made asparagus, but it was, it was with salmon. You know, I had salmon, I had asparagus. I, was, I wanted another side. 
I didn't want to do rice. So I did cauliflower rice. And then I looked and I saw a green vegetable, a white vegetable, and I threw little cherry tomatoes in the cauliflower rice because of Trisha Silverman. It taught me about a rainbow, trying to get that rainbow. So you are having a positive effect, even if I still eat brownies. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, what precautions and exercise guidelines should we follow when training clients suffering from chronic diseases? And I know, Anne, you had your hand raised, so I don't want to please go with the flow on this, and then we'll come to that question. Okay. So you're going to ask me that question? Well, no, go, you were raised your hand. Okay. Please. Well, it kind of leads into that question. Did you notice that all of, none of these pros said anything about a specific exercise? And for 38 years as a fitness pro, I've been worrying about what the program's going to look like. And it's just, just amazing that we have really transformed into really being that listener that can start with what behavioral change can we make first. And it's all with how they see exercise and how they see food. And so many people that come into my facilities are so afraid. We talked about fear already, but so afraid of taking those first steps. And they assume that exercise and any exercise they choose is either going to spot reduce, they're still in that mentality, or it's going to hurt. So getting them to understand that eating the vegetables isn't going to hurt. And the exercise and movement is the key to putting it all together, I think is so important. And addressing the fact that it's not about a specific exercise when they come and they purchase from you or they join your program, but instead how they see exercise right now, meeting them at the point of starting and also how they see nutrition. Because if they don't see the vegetables in a positive light and someone said in the chat that they thought spinach was always in a frozen pack, they didn't ever know that it ever could be fresh. I think that we've all evolved as professionals into being like Mary Beth said, that professional listener. No, and I think that's that's exceptional. And we have to we have to be aware of that. Are there any precautions and exercise exercise guidelines? Like Mary Beth, do you take, let's say somebody's got osteoarthritis, somebody's are there certain precautions that you take? Are there certain things that you advise them against doing or encourage them to do? Well, what's wonderful where I teach right now is I can do a fitness orient orientation on any 65 plus member that walks in the gym. So I do six functional fitness assessments on them. I check their upper body strength, their lower body strength, their core strength, their balance. And I put a step ups. So I, I, I put it all together and then I just personalize it for them. So yeah, you know, we can say CDC recommends 150 minutes of you know muscular endurance exercise per week that's great you know strength training we want to do one to two sets of 10 to 15 reps two to three times a week but is that really feasible for everybody i don't know i feel like my biggest um right now when i working with a lot of the 65 plus market is balance training and so the number one thing I find in, uh, you know, ACSM recommends, you know, a minimum of three times a week doing balance training. So for me, keeping somebody safe on their feet is better than showing them their bicep. All right. So, you know, I, I have to relook at that person, personalize it. I mean, there are guidelines, which are great. But again, look at the whole person, you know, and just step away from what we've been trained to do for so many years because it's not the same for every person everybody i should say everybody so. are there any nutritional recommendations trisha that you can advise people if if they're experiencing arthritis or any type of inflammatory diseases um I, i'm speaking pretty personally but i have a son who tends to get injured quite easily and we think it's related to inflammation. So he cut out gluten and he cut out dairy and eats far more vegetables and lean meats. And it really seemed to help. Are there other things that you're finding that people can do, simple things that people can do to feel better? Yeah, one of the things with arthritis and also with wound healing is vitamin C. It's very important for the structure of your, for the integrity of your skin. And with the fad diets now, with keto, for example, fruit is discouraged and people need fruit. 
You don't have to have tons of fruit, but you need fruit in your diet. You get a great burst of vitamin C. And if you have arthritis, vitamin C may be helpful as well. And then there are your anti-inflammatory foods, your fruits and vegetables, and then the omega-3 fats. And you, my puppet, it's going to make an appearance. Okay. <laughs> the fish puppet has to make yeah, it. Um, <laughs> to remind people to eat fish. So the current guidelines for fish are eight ounces over the course of a week of fatty fish like salmon, sardines, anchovy, uh, trout, bluefish. These are high in the omega threes. And then the vegetarian sources are pumpkin seeds and chia seeds and hemp seeds. Seeds are packed with nutrition. Even poppy seeds, not that those are high in omega-3, but poppy seeds have calcium in them. And a lot of people don't realize that that everything bagel seasoning can give you some, some seeds in there, which is really fantastic. Um, so we want more nuts and seeds and nuts like walnuts have omega-3s in them. And for other, in, other anti-inflammatory foods that I recommend, extra virgin olive oil, um, I think that can be really helpful as well. And then we want to decrease saturated fat because saturated fat is inflammatory. And the new dietary guidelines that came out this year, there are certain things that are pointed out to limit saturated fat, for example. If we have inflammation, we want to you know, watch your salt intake. Um, also for heart disease, watch your salt intake. For if you have um, osteoporosis, watch your salt intake. But most many people don't know is that when you um, increase your salt intake, if you eat a lot of processed foods, your needs for calcium go up. Most people don't realize that. So most people do better by cutting out the processed foods and lowering the, the salt. But going back to the arthritis, it's the omega-3s, healthy diet in general, really decreasing the processed foods is going to be key, decreasing the sugar. So if you're looking to heal, when I, whether it's working with my clients or friends that have injuries or if they're going in for surgery, I tell them, be really careful with the junk food. Don't eat that ice cream if you're having surgery. Try, I know it's hard, right? But try to limit it as much as you can because you'll heal better and faster when you eat really good foods. And one of the things that I've done in my work a lot is help people who have chronic diseases or who have hip surgeries coming up, knee surgeries, I help them lose the weight that they need to lose before that surgery, because that comes up a lot, um, that, that people need to you know, lose the weight to get ready for, for different surgeries and things. But when you look at all the chronic diseases, obesity, and overweight, well, it's the obesity is the real problem and the overweight can lead into that. But one statistic that's in the latest dietary guidelines is that about 74% of adults are overweight or have obesity and over 40% of adults are obese. And the obesity is a risk factor for most of the chronic diseases that people are facing. So it, and now with COVID, many people have gained weight and they're struggling. So we want to be open and, and, and help people to get back on track with their eating and with their exercise and having a coach. And that's why the coaching summit coming up, I know you're going to show that video soon because everyone needs to go to that, but it's so important. People need coaches and they need nutrition coaches. And everyone, I think everyone needs a coach, even coaches need coaches. And that's how we all can get better, I think, to have someone that's going to listen to you and help guide you. It was interesting, Trisha, you brought up, um, I went and um, I broke my nose like 20 years ago, and then I got it fixed, and I went to this really la-di-da plastic surgeon who basically screwed it up and didn't, made me look good, but didn't fix my, forgot to fix my nostrils. Isn't that nice? So then I fell, I think Mary Beth, you remember this. I fell and broke my, broke my teeth and broke my jaw. I was wired shut for six weeks at a Zumba conference, believe it or not. I fell at a Zumba conference, jogging outside on I drive in, in uh, Orlando. Brilliant. Anyway, I think I broke my nose then too. So I had to get a fix. I figure I'm in the middle of the pandemic. What perfect time, right? Just go get your nose fixed. The, phys the plastic surgeon, he was also an ENT who fixed it, told me no salt, 
before I get the surgery. I had a lot of omega-3s. I ate a lot of fish. I stayed away from um, the saturated fats, like you said. No alcohol, no sugar. Hate that guy. Okay, and but I really, it was wonderful. Like the way I felt before the surgery, I'm sure it didn't make after the surgery any better. I hope it, you know, I think it did probably, but it, you feel great. You really do feel great. I mean, I believe in everything in moderation, including moderation, but it's good to have a foundation. Christine, you, um, I think you work with a lot of people with chronic diseases, and I think you've got an empathy that goes forth, but how does this, how does, the, how do you use the empathy? How do you engage them in exercise programs? What type of programs do you encourage? So first I will, I took some notes of what everyone was saying before. Number one is that I always hear Trisha's voice in my head, especially when I have a glass of wine and I'm like, choose the smaller glass, Christine, <laughs> because you know, she show, she's going to break out that wine glass and show you about the sugar. So, you know, little things that, that really do make a big difference. And I know I say that joking, but those, um, those people that have chronic illnesses sometimes, you know, tend to be drinking the alcohol and be eating those foods that you're like, mm, you know, it's, you really are like, please just you know, moderation as, as best you can. I know that no one's perfect. We don't want to put you in purgatory for anything, but just be aware. That's all. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention and that I think is really important. One of the most important things as fitness professionals that we could do is what is like, we, we defined what a chronic disease was any condition that lasts, you know, more than a year. But do you really know what those are? If someone comes to you and says, I have Parkinson's disease, do you know what that is? Do you know what the symptoms are? I have arthritis. I have lupus versus I have um, rheumatoid arthritis versus I have a certain cancer. I mean, if, if Ann comes to me and says, you know, listen, I am trying to get back into shape after having, you know, breast surgery for removing my cancer, that's totally different than if someone comes to you and says, you know, I've had skin cancer on my back versus um, I am suffering with type two diabetes from a poor diet. And honestly, we have to educate ourselves. If you want to be respected, in the fitness industry you have to educate yourself and you know if mary beth is working with 65 and older clients which really is who i work with now as well i have to know what everything is and if i don't i need to go find out and you know i am not a medical doctor so i am not going to diagnose you i'm going to stay in my lane but I also need to educate myself with my exercise science education and background to make my best judgments on, hey, how can I go about training this person? Which brings me what to what you said, Sarah, about if you have a client, I need you all to throw out all of the information that you've learned about what you should be doing as a personal trainer or if you're certified by a certain company that says you need this amount of beats per minute you need this exact choreography you need um you can do whatever you want and i could program up the wazoo but when i'm gonna work with a certain client I may even design them a workout and just rip it up because guess what? That person walks into me and the, arthrit the arthritic client is having a flare up and they're, they can't even grab a weight because their hands are so, you know, swollen and in pain. Um, you know, maybe something's going on with someone's foot or their ankle. I mean, you could go on or how many of you, when you walk in and you talk to someone, ask them, how are they? tell me about the best thing that happened today i never give people a chance to say negative tell me about how great you're feeling today 
you have to do the mindset. There are times I've worked with people where we didn't even get to almost any of the workout because we had to get here first. And, you know, Anne, you just said it, like, I'm trying not to get emotional. Guess what? If Anne walks into me to, to, you know, we're going to do a training, we're going to get back into this. I'm just going to go walking. Um, if Anne is mentally having a breakdown, we're going to sit there and I'm going to say, you know what, Anne, here's the deal. We're not doing anything. Let's just, what's going on? Talk to me. What's going on today? Yeah. And she may cry for 15 minutes. And that may be exactly what Anne needs. So that really, is. I'm going to go back to what Mary Beth said is we have to meet them where they're at is very important. I'm reading the chat. The chat is really fun. I know, Kim, you're going to have to send me that recipe to black, black bean brownies. I want it. I need it. I'm sure it's anti-inflammatory. I've got to have it. And I know how Trisha loves beans. I mean, beans <laughs> are her middle name. Oh my God, if she holds up a can of it, I knew she <laughs> it. I, I knew it. Would you put the beans down? Um, and then I'm hearing if you eat too much fruit, can you get constipated? I love this. Michelle is like one of my Parkinson's clients, eat pears to help to help with constipation. I mean, it's amazing how as fitness professionals, they can really help each other. Um, I, we got asked by Agnes, does the Nutrition Summit give us certification? Um, actually, there is a certification led by um, Melissa Lane on nutrition and hormones. That's gonna be interesting. And then um, Nat has shared, I have mast cell activation syndrome, which helps my clients even more than I could before. This makes the person more helpful, like because we are human as instructors that we're not as healthy. You know, we have this image, like you said, Christine, everybody thinks we're so healthy. I mean, I think, you know, Ann Gilbert is a bulldozer over there. I mean, running two businesses, managing all these people. How early do you get up in the morning and how late do you go bed, you know, is, to bed at night. I'm getting emails from her at 4.30 in the morning. But, and also, um, how can you work with clients to create some lasting behavioral changes? Can I take that one? Yeah, yes. First of all, what brilliant answers, right, everybody? And I love the fact that right now we're just trying to figure out how people can stand up. So my assessments, Mary Beth, include a sit to stand. I think it's so important just to see how your people move from the seated position where most of them come from before they take on a your program. And then Trisha, I want you to focus, tell me more about mini meals because I find the students I'm working with the chronic disease are not eating enough at all. Vegetables, calories, they're not eating at all enough at all. And they really don't know how to get up out of a chair. But I think those are things I would start with, with behavioral change is just celebrating how they get up and celebrating with them on a daily basis, how much more food they're taking in. Because I'm finding in my facilities, and I know you guys agree that the majority of people that are trying to start a new program are probably going to stop eating things and not understand the need for new meals. And everything I've read about chronic disease is we need to feed the engine. We've got to top it off throughout the day. So I think that that would be something I would start with is how often you're eating. And then like Tricia said, take a step up the ladder and focus on exactly what to eat. I think the first hump you have to get over or the first bump you have to get over is are you eating enough calories to help that body through those emotional ups and downs and physical ups and downs. And I also think I would, like Christine said, find out where they are here, because if they're really dealing with stress, either mental or physical stress, there are symptoms that they're dealing with on a daily basis, just holding that chronic disease in them are going to be enhanced. So I think we need to talk initially on stress, whether physical or mental, and if they're doing too much of something instead of a better option. If they're eating enough throughout the day, I think that's so important. Don't you guys agree on that? That they're eating at all? And, um, and then how they can stand, how do, how do they stand up? Because the majority of people that are coming to me 
with these chronic concerns have been sitting for a really long time. So that's how I would address. Oh, that's great. And Mary Beth, how do you do this in your personal training sessions? Well, you know, it goes right back, Christine, you mentioned, I always make it a positive. So I don't want to hear, you know, I walk in and I say, so how are things going today? And, oh, you know, and I go, so what's really good today, you know? And so we always start out on that positive note. Um, I think for me, it's empowering them to learn. And I'm very fortunate with my medical background. I'm not, I'm working with Parkinson's patients. I'm working with helping stroke patients now walk. I just feel I had a medical background, worked in doctor's office for umpteen years anyways, but I feel very comfortable. So now my patient is now my client. And so I have that initial um, education to help them with that, but I help them and I ask them questions so I can learn what is it you're going through? What can I do for you? Today, perfect example. I walked in with this client first time today he walked in on Friday, he was ready to go personal training. He walked in today, he threw his back out golfing. Couldn't do a thing. And he was devastated, but he didn't, he showed up. So what did we do? We sat down, we talked, we stretched. He said, you taught me things I didn't think I needed, but I need them. So I think again, just listening, right? And helping. Oh, um, that's great. Knowledge yeah. later. Use your knowledge the best way you can and just connect. Um, Tricia, how do we, how would we eat differently as an active ager? Because I, I know you do the certificate, I almost forgot to even mention this. You do the certification for Extreme. active aging nutrition. So how do we, um, how do we eat differently as an active ager? Well, one of the things that I think is very important to look at is the protein intake for active agers because people lose muscle as they age and we want everyone to be as independent for hopefully the rest of their lives. If you're not eating enough protein and you're not moving, then we can lose that muscle mass. And what that ends up leading to is that we can't carry the groceries we can't lift and get something out of the cabinet. We can't travel because we can't carry our suitcases. So how do we keep people independent? Well, we want to keep their muscle mass. And one of the things I look at is I calculate how much protein they need and I give them a range. And many people in the active aging years are products of the 80s, for example, where we went fat free and many people really up their carbs. There are still a lot of people that are eating a lot of pretzels and crackers and they're not getting in enough protein. So I look at the big picture, what are they eating in general? I find out what they're eating and I work with, again, from where they're at. But one of the things I do as a dietitian is I calculate their protein needs and that's based on your, your weight um, I look at your age, I look at your fitness goals for that, and, and I come up with the calculation. And if you're looking for weight loss, and then, so the protein's really important, and then the vegetables are really key. And as you age, we don't need as many calories as we did when, in our 20s and 30s. So the calories you do take in are really important that it's nutrient-dense food, food that has vitamins and minerals and plant compounds that contribute to optimal health. So we really want, we don't have a lot of calories to work with. We want to make the most of them and get in the most nu nutrient dense food that, that we can. So we want to decrease the junk as much as we can. And some people want to keep a little of that in and you work with people. The new guidelines that came out say that 85% of what we eat uh, should be healthy and 15% is, you know, kind of the other. And it used to be the 80-20 rule. It's now 85-15%. So that's something, you know, fitness professionals to, you know, keep in mind when we're giving some, you know, nutritional advice to help people out with. But for active aging, vegetables key, getting enough protein key, getting fruit in key, getting your vegetables and enough water. I know it came up in the chat about 
constipation. Well, you want to eat whole grains and beans and vegetables, fruit, nuts, and seeds, plant foods to help with constipation, but you have to chug down water too throughout the day to help flush everything through. And that's nine cups a day for women, 13 cups a day for men. Um, and many people aren't there. And we, I work with them to help get them closer to, to you know, what, what will work for them. I'm going to ask you, is it, I had somebody ask me this yesterday because I drink LaCroix because there's no sugar in it. It's got a little bit of flavor. You know, it's carbonated, which makes me feel like I'm special, you know? <laughs> so is that okay? Does well, I'm very picky, as you know, with my food. And there's one brand that I recommend for carbonated water. They don't pay me yet, but I've recommended it so much that maybe they should. <laughs> but it's Pellegrino. I had it yesterday with a lime. Let me tell you, it beats out Sprite. I haven't had a Sprite in, I don't know, 20 years, but it is delicious. Fresh lime in Pellegrino water, chill that water. These other companies often will add what really is a flavor that they're adding? Do you know they add a little bit of alcohol? I called the companies over the years. I get very curious and I've learned how they create flavor. They often add a teensy bit, what they say, teensy bit of alcohol. And you don't know where they're, what they're using to extract flavors out of fruits, how old that is. A fresh lime, you're getting your vitamin C. And then Pellegrino, not Pellegrino, Perrier. Whoops. I meant Perrier, sorry. Perrier. Anyway, Perrier, not Pellegrino. Perrier is, as far as I know, the only naturally carbonated water. As we know, as exercise, as fitness professionals, carbon dioxide, dioxide for us is a waste product. When you artificially carbonate water, you're pumping carbon dioxide back in. I don't want you to drink a waste product. So that's why I think that, I'm not saying that brand is that you had mentioned, but I'm very leery of where you artificially carbonate water, those brands that you can carbonate your own water or when you buy these carbonated drinks, look closely, closely at your label. It'll say carbon, carbon dioxide added. Um, it's that, been carbonated. You know, so I, carbon it's interesting. Maybe that's why I like LaCroix because there's just a little bit of alcohol. Yeah, alcohol. <laughs> Sarah, but, can okay. I mention one thing on that? I just yes, wanted to say, I thought it was so interesting when you said that, you know, about the muscle mass and losing all that, you know, as you age, because, you know, at age 50, you lose one to 2% of your muscle strength. And after 60, you lose up to 3% a year. So I'm a big component of talking more about muscle mass and sarcopenia than osteoporosis. And if you ask anybody, do you have osteoporosis? They know that. If you ask them if they have sarcopenia, they'd have no idea. So we need to think about muscle mass and we need to think about, you know, again, I'm not training the 20 year old. I'm here at the 60. So you gotta, you can gain muscle again, but I think we need to re-educate people to the fact that you still can gain with good healthy habits and eating habits and everything we've all discussed but muscle, you can gain that. You can get your strength. So we, I think that's something that really needs to be talked about and, more. And as fitness professionals, I'm finding that people are becoming very aware of it. When we, we do an analysis that we send out evals for every single event, and you guys all know we're doing an event every single month, but the yeah. evals that are coming up, we've gotten like 4,500 evaluations back. Number one, point of interest is active aging. Number two used to be functional training. And then it was strength training. And then it went down into, you know, and nutrition's up there. And it, it, now number one is active aging. Number two is strength training. Yeah. Functional training is coming, coming in third now. And I think that's fascinating. Um, Ann and I talk about strength training all the time because we feel like as we've aged, I used to have these like really nice, pretty triceps. And I'm like, I'm working on the Jennifer Aniston arms every other day. And, and you do, Anne, a lot of strength training with your people. Yeah, we do, but it starts, it starts guys with education. You're all saying it. Yeah. We have to change the mindset that they start to look at exercise like they look at food with their brain 
and they have to understand what happens with the loss of muscle. And I'm gonna, okay, since we're disclosing the life of Ann Gilbert in the last couple of months, we have the wonderful in-body assessment opportunity at our clubs, which actually gives an estimate of skeletal muscle mass from right to left and whether you have enough recommended core strength, et cetera, et cetera. And when I got ill, and took care of that. And now I'm on the recovery road, which is going really well. I know you're gonna ask, it's going very, very well, guys. I saw three pounds change on the scale. And in the old days, I would have thought, what? Good thing maybe, but it was <laughs> loss of muscle. It was loss of muscle. And it made me in a very short period of time become my own client. I became all of a sudden someone that fell someone that was worried about skeletal muscle balance, coordination, speed, agility in a very short period of time of healing. Yes, and that was important, right? But during that time period, I became my client. I became my client and the ability to be agile and to coordinate and to resist the fall diminished. And we really need to talk about that lack of strength training. It is, yes, about that beautiful tricep, Sarah, but it's also about what happens to you or I or any of your clients when they fall down. So Christine, you are really bringing that fall prevention to the surface. I'm really proud of you, but you, I almost want to spend most of my time in the clubs now in lunch and learns, right guys? And with Zoom, we can do it anywhere we are and any time of the day, but education I think is key and really giving these very dramatic examples so that people understand the need and start to look at exercise with their mind, just like they have been starting to do with their food. They look at their food and their exercise partnered together, but they do it with their brain. That's excellent. I, I have to stop us just for a second. I promise that I will show you a video. So this is from our Nutrition Coaching Summit, which is just nutrition, nutritioncoachingsummit.com. And we've got a wonderful video here. And you know, we've got these wonderful presenters there and we've got it. That's happening July, this, uh, pardon me, June 19th on Saturday, June 19th. It's a one day conference, which is really kind of interesting. And if you look here, the sessions are really great because we have four different sessions to choose from every hour in the hour, or you can simply get the recording of all of the sessions. So attend them, you know, sporadically during the day and then get the recording for 30 days after the event. And then we have an active aging summit that's coming up July 24th through 25th, which is really nice. joining us today. Thank you, Sean Carlson, for running us. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank you, Christine. Thank you, Anne. Thank you all for joining us. We hope to see you live in October in Chicago, November in Dallas, and in December in Boston, Tricia's hometown. Take care, everybody. Have a good night.